a project like this is really only possible in that sort of level of confidence and of trust that we develop and build between each other. It's a two-way street. It's a mutual admiration society in a way, of, but certainly a very fruitful one. And I really want to say to Ragnar on a personal level that I never really expected you to give such a huge commitment. I know that this project is deeply personal to you. I think this is probably the most, where you are digging the deepest into your own soul and looking at how all of the, the work that's developed over the last few years, actually where all of that other work has come from. So we're actually going to the source deep down um, of, from your childhood and all the cultural and artistic inspirations that you've had all these years and your, your, the way you've been personally reacting to it. I think it's an incredible journey that you've offered to take not in a private sector, not in a private way like most artists would develop their their work in a very private space and you've offered to put it into a very public space. And what's exciting to me is that you're sharing it with all your best friends, your colleagues, people that you've worked with over the years, your family, your father here who actually brought this um, whole history into your life when you were just a little boy. And um, you're basically sitting in front of a group of people that are endeavoring to do practically the impossible. And they have taken on a project, which a commitment that is huge. And I salute you for your courage. And I'm very, very, very honored and personally very moved that you've chosen us to share that with. And that shows a tremendous amount of trust. And that's where I want this collection to be. And thank you for recognizing that and being my friend. And I love you. <laughs> so this is a personal story. This is um, basically where I'm coming from in this whole project. So I'd really like to pass the microphone on to Daniela. I think you should really introduce the exhibition, the performance, or to Ragnar. Maybe Ragnar has to respond to this emotional outburst from myself. Thank you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. The, the, uh, the, the, yes, the, the project, the Palace of the Summerland, it is, uh, it is, uh, it is based on a book by Halter Laxness called World Light, which is uh, sort of uh, the uh, the family bible in my family. Like my my uh, yeah, like my my father here, Kjartan Ragnarsson, has done three adaptations out of this book. And now this is sort of sort of the second adaptation I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 the, the power of this book is immense, and having, and uh, on, uh, like you said, that it's kind of the, 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 the basics for all my works, because I think it's, uh, it, is a, it is a story that is about kind of the longing for beauty and the, 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 the politics of beauty and the uh, kind of impossible way of, of, you know, of trying to bring beauty into, into an unjust world. And, and it's, a, it's like written, it's, it's written at the, at the height of, in the crucible of modernism, where, where, uh, where the author is, is, uh, is dealing with, yeah, dealing with the, like, the, the old idea of the romantic artist. And 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 it's done with so much irony and tongue in cheek, but still so much so much uh, spirit and beauty that that it has just really clunk. It has really yeah been stuck in my soul since I was a kid. And so what we're going to do with this story about about uh, the artist and the great, the, you know, the great disappointments and failures of the artist Donald Carson. Uh, we're going to make a movie. We're going to make an epic movie. 
in the uh, in the studio, no, in the museum. So, so just uh, when uh, when Francesca uh, invited me to to do a project here, I immediately thought like, I, I, I because because the Augarten really looks like these. It really looks like these old Hollywood movie sets, the movie studios, where you have the big ceiling light and everything. And I somehow just really got this longing in my stomach. I wanted to make a movie and to have to, to create a situation where there would be where where the where the audience would walk into the tension of, of movie making. I really love I really love like. I'm raised in the theater where there is, where there is uh, always the tension of making the piece, and also in, in the cinema where there's the tension of making the movie. But I'm I'm not so flabbergasted always by the result. You know what I mean? The I really love the <laughs> I really love the atmosphere of making it. We're just going to start shooting this movie tomorrow, and the uh, whole of April we will be be. Yeah, we'll be making this epic up to with an, an open studio where the audience can come in, and then the exhibition is going to turn into uh, yeah, turn into the installation of all our all our uh, equip, all our uh, all our shit, like all the <laughs> all the all the remains of a film set, like because we've been painting, like everything is done on site, like painting the sets and and uh, you know. Stitching the costumes together, etc., etc. So we've been working now here and will be continuing to work. So that will be left here, and also all the dailies. So we take all the dailies we shoot every day and put them on monitors, and they will be on display in the exhibition. So it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, yeah, it's a production. It's a production, and it's like, and it's kind of you know, it's like the the this the skeleton of a production. But I really, but it's all about beauty. It's all about like striving for beauty, and that is so pathetic. That's why we like it. <laughs> Reimann has said it all, but I, I, I just sort of repeat it again, very, very briefly in my own words. Basically, when we started talking about this project, Wagner and I and Francesca, we said, well, this uh, this building was built in 1957 as a studio of an Austrian artist who, for his entire life, was uh, looking for beauty and nothing else but beauty. So it started about this idea of, of uh, it being a studio of a, of a very specific artist with its very, very specific um, history and, and us always striving and, and having this desire on a curatorial end to actually use the studio as a studio, you know, to sort of reinvigorate it with this history of this place and actually, you know, not only showing exhibitions that are about the Finnish project, but actually bringing in with Ragnar and through Ragnar's project, um, is a, you know, a project that is about production, that is about revealing the aspect of production within the artistic practices of today. And to sort of setting it free and letting it happen and allowing people to enter the place of, or the, the workshop if you want, the place of its creation. And the other second sort of vision, you know, very sort of preliminary vision, was about sort of this striving of an artist, uh, this the struggle of an artist, which is kind of an eternal story. You know, it probably is older than mankind, uh, but this struggle for beauty, serenity, inspiration, and the ability to sort of stick to that um, to that source. You know, how how do, how do you hold on to this? How do you actually you know, um, dedicate your life and how your life dedicates itself to this sort of epic moment of, you know, beauty is driving artistic revelation, if you want. And out of these very sort of initial um, ideas and conversations, Wagner developed this um, overly, overly, overly megal megalomanic idea to take um, this e epic novel, you know, World Light, which um, how they will tell, tell us a bit more about, which is really uh, written in four books uh, over a period of four years, you know, which contains and written a period between 1937 and 1940, 
which was not, diff not only difficult everywhere in the world politically, but specifically also for, um, for Hadel Laxness, who was a fervent communist, who was in, 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 in the Stalinist Soviet Union just a few years old, earlier, who was really sort of struggling for sort of political justice and, and a, a political vision of the world that he, I would, my interpretation, and, and, and I'm, I'm sure we'll have another conversation that, is uh, definitely very much concerned about, um, you know, about the human landscape of this world. And in that phase, he writes this, his book, which is all about um, this young man who has actually no other choice than uh, in a world that is full of, um, well, I would say, you know, doesn't really allow him to develop his own soul, his own being. This young man eventually sort of needs to walk into the nothing, into the glacier, needs to sort of surrender his life, you know, to the only thing where he sees true value, true beauty, true revelation, and that is sort of art, nature, and sort of the, the very sort of eternal grand vision um, of, of humanity, if you want. So it's, in a way, it's also a book of, full of hope, you know, yeah? it's, it's, it's tragic, but it's hopeful. It's, um, it's critical in a certain sense, yeah, because it has also very, very sort of sad uh, moments in it. But again, all the time it comes back to, um, to moments where we as readers and as, as sensible people, you know, feel that there is um, the possibility of overcoming. Yeah. And to make a film of that book, yeah, I mean, even a... Hollywood movie seems completely impossible. Right? It has so many scenes. Yeah? Um, it's so complicated in its narration. It has so many aspects that are so overly, overly impossible. Yeah? But then um, Ragnar and Haldor and, and Ragnar Helgi, who's uh, on the Carpenter Workshop today, have started to put this together. So this 120-some pages, this is the new script written by them for the filmic adaptation that they will start tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, be here. And it will it's, consists of 80 scenes, has 25 characters, has, you know, uh, how many sets? 20 sets, backdrops, uh, costumes, racks of costumes. And oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 17 performances. Yeah. Oh, 25 performances. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Um, so we were in the process of working uh, with, uh, with, with Ragnar and his team. We were just getting these things. It's like, oh, we need five more performers. Oops. Uh, we need you know, three more sets. We need... So it's, it's been growing, as you can imagine. And it's been growing in a way which was completely unpredictable. We've never expected this to happen. You haven't expected that. Then maybe you have. Um, so what happened? They arrived five days ago. They arrived to an exhibition hall that is completely empty. All that was there is, was the raw material, were the building blocks of the story. You know, Basically, plywood planks, buckets of paint, you know, what you need to make and start a workshop. Um, now when you will come in, you will see the first sets that have been built. So it's a very organized group. We have five departments. We have the prop departments. We have the carpenter departments. We have uh, the beauty department, the prop departments, and so on and so forth. So it's all perfectly organized. They all have absolute, uh, they're under, under the, 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 the governance of two very strong ladies who put them to sort of direction every day in the morning. And so the sets have been built, beautiful, amazingly beautiful backdrops have been painted. You'll see the glacier landscapes of, of Iceland kind of suddenly coming in. So all of that has happened. We have the first elements to start shooting scene one, as I said, tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. One scene, well, planning to have three to five scenes a day. So it allows us to kind of continuously narrate the story, to add more material, to provide you with the latest um, things that have happened in the week. So, you know, you're happy to read that. You can watch the dailies, you know, every day there's material that will be produced, that will be put up on, on monitors, so you can watch that. So you can follow the process of creation, you can understand what has happened. And maybe just as a final remark, I would say, um, this project has many, many histories, as Francesca said. One of them is a very personal history 
into Ragnar's own life and life story and his sort of uh, upbringing in theater. His mother is an actress, his father is a theater director. So it's sort of facing his own provenance. Um, we talked about kind of attacking Halder Laxness's incredible legacy and, and addressing it creatively today in the 21st century with a new group of artists, with a new sort of vision of what literature and creativity means today. But also it is addressing sort of the history and the possibilities of performance art today. So what I mean by that is it is a complete hybridization. It's a queerness of theater, filmmaking, performance art, exhibition. It has all of that and it has it in a way where each of these elements are still there. It is an exhibition. You can enter it, you can sort of walk through it. It has all the elements of an exhibition. It has all the elements of a durational performance. It has the elements of a theater play. It has the elements of a film set and filmmaking. Uh, all of that is there, all of that is real, but it all comes together sort of smoothly in one platform. So I would say this is sort of the first historic readdressing, if you want, in this project. Thank you very much. <laughs> and asked me, do you want to be a part of it? <laughs> and I was so impressed by the whiskey and the cigar that of course I said yes. <laughs> and for some time it was going to be a silent movie, but now we have a <laughs> 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 silent but not that part. <laughs> and Ragnar told me it will be like Lazy Town meets Chaplin meets a softcore form. Yeah. <laughs> and that really sold it to me. Because <laughs> as a representative of the family, you know, this stuff is, uh, Haldolax is very holy in Iceland. And uh, you, you can't really play with any of Haldolax's work in Iceland because people always think that it's lesser than the original and this stuff should not be touched. So it's, so, but the family is very happy that we're doing this. That we're, that we're taking, that the new generation is, 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 is commenting on Laxness and making sure that he isn't turned to stone. And, um, but we have to go all the way to Germany to do it, of course. And, uh, Austria. Austria. <laughs> Austria. <laughs> <laughs> the, the German speaking world. The German world. <laughs> and uh, and uh, people from Iceland get to watch just from far away. If you see the pamphlet, this is like the... Uh, I think we would never, we would never dare to do this in Iceland. Never dare to do this in Iceland. national flag. <laughs> this is sort of like the, the Laxness national flag. <laughs> because this is like how his books are uh, printed in Iceland, and like every bookshelf in Iceland has just a row of these books. <laughs> and then we made this just to remember uh, on what sort of holy ground we are on right now, and how we are demolishing it. <laughs> but we made a script, and... Uh, if you have read the book, please don't read the script. <laughs> because of course you have to make like make like artistic uh, sac uh, sacrifices and, and stuff like that to, to really make this happen. And uh, we have combined a lot of characters, we've combined a lot of scenes, we have uh, made the story a little bit shorter on, on, on some notes, but try to keep the, 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 the impact of it intact. In and I think we really, really have something here. Can you make a comment on the soft porn part? <laughs> it was a soft, a soft core porn budget, he said. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we can't really, we can't really spend any time if a scene is not good enough. We can't really sp spend the whole day on it. We have to finish uh, each day. We have to finish the schedule of each day, even though, even if it means we're working through the night. So we can't allow us uh, any time to... But there are, are also a lot of sex in it. There is a lot of sex in it, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the poet is a, is a very sexy guy. And, uh, and uh, women are just crazy for him. And, and, and that is... When, I, when, I, when, our, when our main star arrives, David Thor, you will see that we really found the, the right man for, for the part because he is one of, one of Iceland's most sexy men. <laughs> 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 I think this book actually has a has a has a big impact on kind of because you know you often get this question like why because Iceland uh, you know there's like a there's a lot of art in this small city Reykjavik and you know literature music. Visual arts, blah blah blah. But 
and I think that this, and it's there's some tone in it which which very often deals with a ban of stuff like beauty. And I think this book really, I mean, think about like a banal band like silver, it's like and and moon that is like all like beauty banal bands. And and uh, and I think this I think this book kind of had a had a lot of impact in how people look at beauty. It's kind of with a it's kind of a tongue in cheek. You know, when when you're surrounded by all this all this epic landscapes in Iceland, you just have to have your the tongue in your cheek or just become or you just become ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, like I said, after the financial uh, crisis. Well at least we have the market. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no.